Yes. Lizzie Butterfly coming to you live from Santorini. I've got some really important things to talk about today. And one of the major pieces that was coming through in one of my coaching calls with my client today was the vault that we build around really being loved. And it's very often quite counterintuitive. Like we don't actually prepare for that. We don't actually know that this is a thing that happens. We often do it unconsciously, you know, thinking we're actually doing the right thing. And, you know, believing that we're moving the right pieces and very often it comes like through the back door it's very often when you know that kind of love comes through and like no this is not it like i'm not gonna get that i'm not gonna really receive that i'm not worthy I'm, you know in some in some way i'm not gonna I'm not gonna be ready for this i'm not perfect enough yet wait let me just do some more spiritual work well let, let me go buy that dress first let me let me explain this to you first before I can allow your like this other person to love me, before I can allow money to really come through, before I can fully receive the goodness and the abundance that's there. Let's take a deep breath in here. This is so big. And the reason why this is so big is because very often we're the first ones in our family lineage to break the pattern, to break this pattern of this identification with the fact that Love is meant to be there for other people. The wealth is there for somebody else, you know, for the neighbor, for the best friend, for, you know, the best friend's dad, for this person, the other person, but not you, right? We've built an identification around the fact that we're going to be the odd one out. We're going to be the scapegoat. We're going to be the, you know, the identity of, I, like everybody else is going to have that, but I'm not going to have that, right? And we sabotage it. We set things into our systems into our even our feeling system right when we're actually activating a decision out of a, a a sensation of this is not safe right let me go back to safety let me go back to the thing that i know let me go back to the the pattern that i've received from you know my mother's lineage from my dad's lineage let me go back to that place that i already know because this at least i know right? I already know how to not receive. I already know how to not be loved. I already know how to not be wealthy. I already know how to not have success because my whole family has been doing it. And all the generations in the past have been doing it. My best friend's generation have been doing it. Like all the women that I know have been doing it this way. So let me just go back to that place. Let me go back to that little box where I cannot have what I really want. And then I will identify with it. And I will, you know, make myself feel bad about it, make myself feel shame and blame around it, because that's the thing I know. And this is so big. This is so big. If you have been in that place, if you've seen yourself like move super close to a thing that you really wanted or a person that you you feel like, oh my gosh, this could be, this could be a soulmate kind of person. This could be a client of mine. This could be the next friend I'm going to be communicating with, this is going to be my community. But wait, let me just go back to the other thing that I, I knew, which is when I don't have that. It's so painful to be in that limbo because our, like the pain that actually is felt the most is because our soul knows that we are meant to have that. And it's kind of an ego trip. Because we're getting ourselves into our own way so that we cannot have what we really want. And so we're building this protection mechanism, right? We're steeping into that masculine wound of let me be the lone warrior in the woods. Let me be independent because, you know, I don't want to be codependent. So let me just be independent because this is how I've seen all the other women before me do it. So that it must be true. It must be right. This must be the way to do things. And when we really resign from connection and from love and community, when we resign from, you know, team building and intertwined connection and like feeling the trigger and staying in the room, 
right? Feeling the pain and staying in the room. And we resign from that. We walk out the door because we're like, I'm not staying there. Like I've seen all this painful patterns before. I don't want to, I don't want to feel that disappointment again. I don't want to feel that pain again. So let me go back to that place that I know, because at least in that place, it's like painful, sure, but at least I know the pain. And it's one of the most counterintuitive steps that we take. And it usually stems from that wounded masculine, you know, this lone warrior in the jungle who cannot contain his own anger is just going to, you know, destroy everything. Right? Or, you know, this wild woman who, like, cannot contain her own emotions. It's so painful to be in that place. Because... That place is actually where we think that we're leading our show because we know better. Let me just do this alone because at least I can't be disappointed. Let me take a decision on my own so at least, you know, nobody can come in my way. Let me go travel and be on my own so that I don't have to feel the pain of actually feeling disappointed by other people. And it usually comes from that urgent place. It usually comes from that erraticness in our body. It comes from that place of heart racing, palpitation. I cannot feel the loneliness. I cannot feel the sadness. I cannot feel the anger. I cannot feel the shame. So let me just go do something. Just go, just go do anything, right? And very often we're pushing the very things away. This is how we keep our dreams at an arm's length rather than fully receiving them because receiving the dream that we're really meant to have is going to bring up a pain point and it, you know, this excruciating, um, heart wrenching sensation that we're not going to have it. So let's just not have it from the get go. Because if we get it, then we might have to feel the fact that we're not going to get it again. So let me just, let me just go do something else. Right? So we're sabotaging the very thing we need. We're sabotaging the very, the very things that are coming through that the universe is bringing into our field because we're, you know, we're not willing to stay in the room and walk through the trigger jungle. Right? It's like, let me not, let me not, go, let me not get the coaching because this other coach that I had, you know, like they, they hurt me or, you know, they, I wasted all my money and nothing worked. Like that same pattern comes up in multiple scenarios. So I just want to bring multiple scenarios to the table so that you can really feel into which one, you know, connects with you the most. Like one of the major pieces that I've seen, you know, this occur is actually with powerful men. You know, let me go to that lover that I know is not going to quite be it, but at least I can complain about him. At least I can, you know, because that's what I know. So let me just keep powerful men at an arm's length because if they disappoint me, oh my gosh, then that's going to really hurt. If they leave me, then that's going to really hurt. And we create all these scenarios on how, you know, it's going to be worse than doomsday. It's going to be, you know, terrible when actually the universe is trying to be on our side because we haven't fully risen into that queendom where we can hold ourselves to our own pain and our own loneliness, our own sadness, our own rage, our own stuff that's going to come up. Because guess what? If your lover is going to come in and really, if they really mean to love you, they mean to love you like fully and completely. Not just the piece that you think is perfect, not just the piece that you think is going to be lovable, and you're going to hide all the rest under the rug because your divine soulmate lover is going to want to see all of it. And the truth is the empowered man is not going to stay in the room. He's actually probably going to feel repelled about you not owning that place. And this is not to shame or blame you. Like let's, you know, this is about sovereignty. It's about you staying inside your body and fully owning yourself. And knowing that even if you feel disappointment, you're going to be okay. Even if you're going to feel the anger, you're going to move yourself through it. Even if you're going to feel like you cannot handle whatever it is that you're going to, you're going to find a way to handle it in the moment that it comes up. And very often when we've had traumatic experiences that we haven't fully integrated or alchemized, 
we are going to be repelling the very things that we need, right? We're going to be saying the things that are going to hurt the person. We're going to be activating the behavior that is going to be rejecting the very people that are actually simply coming in because, you know, they're in that benevolent space. They simply want to come in and, you know, co-create with us and we're pushing them away. Went through a very painful breakup story with, you know, with this man um, that I was with for nearly a year. And it was such an incredible learning curve. Even though I, I do understand now that, you know, we were not fully meant to be together, but that was that activation that I had to move myself through, which, you know, was connected with betrayal. I betrayal, you know, I, I went into this betrayal pattern because this is what I've known from the past, you know, from men betraying me or me betraying other men. This is what I know. So every time I'm fantasizing about, you know, this other person, when I'm actually in the room with this one person, it's a trigger zone for me. This is the red flag that I'm trying to sabotage being fully loved for who I am. And it's taken me quite a while to swing back around through this because the minute when I acted and reacted from a place, I didn't see it. I didn't see it for what it was. I just saw, oh, I just have this you know, this desire, I just want to get lost, just want to, you know, drink a little too much, I just want to, you know, like lose myself. And that's the erraticness. And it takes such a spin for us to, to go around and really know ourselves deeply and completely so that we even know the shadow. When we know the shadow, we know the darkness, we know our pitfalls, we understand the pieces that are actually activating us to move into the direction that we already know when we've seen the pattern and we've visited and we've revisited over and over again, we can recognize it before it walks into the door, right? And this is something that is so... Um, so profound right it's so profound it's like a few weeks ago i met this amazing man like he was so powerful like one of the most incredibly generous people that i've met and i really took my time because i knew this man is somewhat activating a survival mechanism inside me and i couldn't figure out why and i have to say around a month into the dating story, I figured out, oh my gosh, there was like already a belief like he might be married because the way he's acting, the way he's reacting, the you know, the way he moves, the way he makes his puzzle pieces doesn't feel like a man who could be fully available. But I still kept myself in there because it was something that, you know, kept my interest going, kept my desire going. And I'm so glad I slowed down. I'm so glad I listened to the survival mechanism because me listening to that survival mechanism inside of my body of like feeling heated up although there was like this counter you know it was like this conflicting thing and I'm like what is this conflict this conflict actually really about and one of my previous patterns would have been to actually speed things up to go faster right to just get it done to just quickly get it done and dusted with right like go into the intimate space really fast like go into the connection really fast you know really allow myself to just get lost because i didn't fully sorry there was something popping up on my stream i didn't fully understand what my soul like what, what my body's language was speaking as and because I knew how to monitor that, this is stuff that I teach to women on how to really read the survival mechanisms inside your body, I slowed down. I slowed way down. And, you know, it's like I really moved the pieces only as a response to his moves. He moves, I move. He moves, I respond. He moves, I respond. He moves, I respond. I do not go into the frantic, let me just speed it up, you know, while the head, like, let me just ask all the questions right away. Leaning back allowed me actually to make a wise decision in the end where I realized he, he is married. He's not an aligned partner. 
even though I'm feeling all the intense desire and all these, I want to get this, right? That wasn't actually me. Well, it, it was me in a different sense, right? And so this is what I'm coming with for you. When love is right there in front of your door, how are you holding yourself? And so there can be two ways. There can be that I'm going to unplug because this feels too much. It feels too intense. It feels like it's, you know, it feels like I can't handle it. So let me just sabotage this right away from the get go so I can unplug and just be free. Right. Or there's this, let me speed things up. Let me go quick. Let me just, you know, let me just go into it and like, you know, head in. And when we find the middle ground, it's much easier to, to feel into things because the feminine energy, when we're really working with our feminine magnetism is yes, like the leaning back is one of the most important pieces because it allows us to slow the F down when we actually wanting to go full speed ahead or full speed ahead the other way, like disconnecting and, you know, rupturing and like breaking that breaking pattern. And so when we slow down, it actually, re, you know, it's like when we fully start to understand, oh, wait, what is really playing out here? Why is it that I'm feeling like I have to make this decision so super quick? Why do I feel like I have to invest like right now? Or, you know, I have to go sleep with this guy like on the first night right away. Or why is it that I feel so intense when this client is speaking to me? when I feel like I, I want to, you know, literally sh shove my next package into their mouth. <laughs> so they sign up. Um, I was just laughing about my, the imagery that I use because it feels like, you know, you're like spoon feeding the baby. And one of the, the things that is really like wanting to resonate very often is that when we're going into this frantic frenzy of like, let me just go run straight into the jungle and like, beat every single thing down or let me like just go back to the jungle that I know either one is a sign very often it's a sign of this un, you know this disconnected it's like we're intensely desiring something and it's either going to go this way or that way but there's no middle ground and so that composure that is missing in that moment is usually when we're activating that survival mechanism because the survival mechanism Tr truly what this actually boils back down to the essence is the fight or flight response or the freeze so it's sorry not the fight but the the freeze or the flight response meaning you're either going to run away or you're going to just lock up and hold and these are pieces that are actually signals the red flags for our disempowered energies and it does take practice to to learn how to read this in multiple layers. Hence why, you know, this is all broken down for you in one of the programs that I created, which is called the Cosmic Goddess. And, you know, the way I lead into it is actually you can act, you can go and explore these layers through dance. You can go, you know, use dance as a tool of, of becoming more familiar with these states of being. But obviously, like, I don't want to sell you this program today. Like, you know, you can go and take a look at it if you want to. But I, what I really want to bring in here is the awareness is the key. Because when you understand that your decisions are being run by your survival mechanism, you're actually unplugging from your empowerment. And this is also what is creating a wall around you for your manifestation. Because... It's like you're holding two frequencies at once. And this is usually what makes you, you know, like um, go into either one of the extremes. And so very often slowing down, slowing down our thoughts, slowing down our actions, slowing down, knowing that that decision, you can still make it tomorrow if you need to make it. Knowing that regardless of what decision you're going to make, you're going to be loved and whole and complete and it doesn't make a difference. is very often the piece that starts to move the needle into that calibration of, you know, it kind of goes like this, and you're like calibrating with the middle, right? So you just like stay in the middle and holding that frequency. Very often when a woman is capable 
of like self-soothing and bringing her electric charge down into okay let me just breathe let me feel into this let me monitor my sensations more than worrying about what the other person is thinking or feeling right when we're actually drawing our energy back inside without building the walls this is important so we're drawing our energy back inside we're leaning back into our physical sensations into our bodily sensations into our feelings into our emotions into the stories that are playing are we playing past stories or are we playing future stories and coming back into the present moment and really activating that capacity and that capability of of soothing down your nervous system right so that you can actually move the the pieces on your chessboard with emotional intelligence with maturity with elevation with seeing the long term like who am i becoming in the long term who am i becoming as a future vision of myself when i'm moving this decision forward when i'm making this yes or no right and it's one of the most difficult things to do because when we're actually calibrating or like acting from that survival mechanism it's either we just want to you know go into the avoidant pattern of like i'm just not going to deal with this i'm not even going to think about it yeah i'm having all these fantasies but we're not even not even going to make it make it a thing i'm just going to act i'm just going to act on an impulse because this is what feels good in the moment or it's going to make us speed up and like let me splash this cash let me splash this cash let me get this let me just go have this lover and this lover and let me let me go you know do all the things because we're actually secretly afraid of the void and this is what it really comes back down to it's again you know this is in the cycle of the manifestation the universal creation wheel it's one of the tools in the cosmic goddess as well there's different levels on the you know the creation the universal creation wheel and one of the stages is actually the void and very often the void kicks in once we've already either manifested what we wanted or we've manifested something that's going to help us to go there and we're experiencing the void we're experiencing the emptiness and very often the void and the emptiness is going to trigger the survival mechanism as well so say you're going to you know make a ton of money straight away your client is going to pay in full for the very first time your very first impulse is going to be to go and like spend it all right away right impulsive spending will go into some kind of addiction because the true fear is that you actually you're afraid of the void you're afraid of this oh my gosh like i now have to let this person die literally you're having to let this person who had never had this dream die it's like you're it's a fear of death that comes up very often in that moment and so what is activated is through this fear the survival mechanism is activated and you're actually going into sabotage or denial or rejection or um abandonment or whatever is going to come up and very often that's also the field where all trauma is going to come up to the surface this is why success to most people doesn't make sense in their body it doesn't make sense because the body is wired so much it's identified so much with the fact that they've never had that success you know i mean success like you can input whatever it is that you want the relationship you want the kind of money that you want the client that you want to work with the house that you've wanted the children that you wanted to bear that very success is going to bring up that void that void blueprint and the void blueprint is one of the scariest pieces because we're actually literally having to let the old person that we were who haven't had not had this yet die and a part in us doesn't want to let go right so this is really what it comes back to and it you know streams all the way back to well really if we take it all the way let's take it all the way it's it goes back into the moment of your birth right the moment when you actually left your mother's womb and there's this new thing and you're like what are these cold hands what is this cold air what is this thing air even like i have never even like i've never even taken a breath like what is this am i safe am i safe to just you know 
to spit all the liquid out and actually inhale like it hurts to inhale what is this thing air like there is no cognitive understanding yet it's a feeling sensation this is why this is so primal and when we're misinformed about these things or we're simply not been educated because it's very recent um you know scientific background that has really brought, brought this up to the surface truly that's what every time you're birthing into a new level this level of the void is going to come up right this fear of death is going to come up and that fear of death very often is going to go into self-soothing mechanisms that are actually not healthy for you right because we don't know how to grow out of these growth pains so success in a sense and bliss and pleasure and all these pieces they come with trigger zones why because the trigger zone is a sign of success the 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 fear is a sign of success the the sabotage is a sign of success right and so it's all about understanding how to unlearn this process, unwire this process that makes you kick into the survival mechanism and is going to bring you into that, you know, equilibrium, that balanced state so that you can fully open and receive the goodness. And it's fascinating to see because this really is a lifelong process. Because this lifelong process is something that you keep with you forever. So right here, right now in Santorini, as you know, I'm literally walking inside my dream. I've led myself to get to this place where I actually walk inside my dream, where I pay for my accommodation in full, where I get to have the money and spend it, where I, I get to feel the sensations in my body of overlooking these over these views and feeling you know feeling the infinite potential and guess what's coming up impulsive spending is coming up right like feeling like i have to do something but wait i created the stream in order to enjoy it right i i created the stream in order to Feel the full potential and abundance that I really can magnetize. But because I've educated myself around this topic, I can feel how my body is going into frenzy mode. And I can slow down. I can slow down before I make the investment. I can feel myself getting excited and I'm like, I'm actually going to be making investments from that composed place because this is how my future self is going to lead herself through. But that future self is already active inside me now, right? And it's a whole spin, right? There's a whole spin of, I need to launch something right now. I need to do something right now. I need to write to this client right now. I need to do all the things right now because there's a level inside me that is still afraid of really letting go of this version of Lizzie who never actually manifested her dream but I'm right here, right? So if I'm right here, all that I'm here for really is to enjoy the dream that I created and even enjoy the anticipation of the new dream, the new level that I get to create. It's, hap it's all happening now. It can't happen tomorrow. It can't happen yesterday. It's happening right here, right now. And so, consciously slowing down and consciously going oh i'm feeling all these pulls and feeling all these pulses i'm feeling like you know this dream man is never going to appear and you like all these thoughts it's actually a sign of success it's all a sign of success it's all a sign of a dream coming through right here right now because this is what i'm open for this is what i'm available for this is what i led myself into and I'm celebrating this. I'm creating ritual space. I'm slowing down. I'm meditating. I'm really allowing myself to receive this. Let me tell you this. I'm the first woman in our family lineage creating her life's bliss. Literally, consciously creating her life's bliss. 
No other woman who has come before me had the level of awareness and the level of education and the level of power and the level of financial stability and the, the level of you know freedom and liberation than I've had. So of course all this stuff is going to come up because there's a whole lineage that has always walked the other way. Right, there's always, you know, subdued, submitted themselves. These women always, you know, were subdued and placed under a society where women, you know, were seen as secondary beings. They weren't seen as equal beings, they were seen as secondary beings. So imagine this. Here I am walking this life, making myself the first, like not even the first, simply a being capable of fully receiving love, wealth, abundance, you know, sensuality, sexuality, fully going into her fully expressed mode. I'm the first woman doing this in this life or in this lineage. This is huge, right? And I, you know, will spare the whole the whole topic on how we actually carry trauma from, you know, from. Um, previous generations, because most of you already know this anyway, I've created videos about this as well, but this is huge, right? And I invite you to really go into that space, really go into that space of where you're actually going to consciously slow down so you can see the sand settle, so you can see the whirlwind come back down. I was doing some snorkeling um, just yesterday and there was something that came to mind as, you know, I saw that there were these ropes that they tied, you know, probably to hold, um, I don't know how they're called, but they're like usually balls that are floating um, on the waters to, to give, you know, the ships the signs of, you know, how close they can come to the shore and, you know, where it is, isn't safe to come. And you could really see on the ropes, you could see the sign of time. You could see that, you know, these ropes have been there for maybe, I don't know, dozens of years. And they're, you know, it's like, and I was just watching the waves and there was like some algae sort of hanging loose and, you know, it's like the wave would come and then it's like there was a, a, a ripple effect, you know, under these, these algae that was, you know, moving through. And one of the things that I was reflecting on was you know, very often we're on the wave and we can't see it and all we have to do is just dive so that the, you know, the ripple effect of the wave kind of slows down, right? It's almost like just an echo effect. It doesn't have to, the things that are happening in our life don't have to affect and impact us like the full splash of the wave. It can just be a ripple effect and it actually allows us to really, you know, allow this energy to just settle and to soothe down and to calm down so we can fully see what is what is the real impact here you know what is the real impact of us moving through the world what is the real impact of our dreams moving towards us right like if we can slow down our energy field actually opens and the survival mechanism wants you to speed up, but what it creates, it creates tension around your energy field. So the things that are really meant to come to you, they just either pass you by or they'll whip you so hard in the face that you just, you just want to go the other way. You want to avoid it. And when we slow down, what it creates is that energy field, actually, it, it kind of calms down and it expands. And in that expansion, it's like there's this opening of the goddess when she's opening the yoni to fully receive the bliss you know, of her divine lover, that's really what I, I, I experience this as, is me slowing down, is me actually opening, opening, constantly opening. That is the quest. The quest is for us to enter that space where we can open and we can remain open despite, you know, the tension. It's like we can monitor, oh my gosh, there's tension coming up and whew, let me just release that so I can fully receive it. Yeah. I hope this inspired you today. Let me know how this resonated with you. Let me know what came up with you while you were listening. It's, it's so, it's so magic when we can really master this, when we can master this over and over, we can practice and master it. It's like, 
we're the, we are the queen already. It's just, you know, the activation requires training. It requires us to move slowly, steadily, you know, with this focus that things are coming in and we can receive that also. All of it, right? To really surrender and allow ourselves to not only receive, but to really, you know, be loved for everything that we are, every single piece of us, right? And wherever we're creating tension is to just feel, oh my gosh, this door can open too. I can now, you know, live free of this shackle, of this shame, or this disappointment. Because even if it comes up, I know how to hold myself through it. I know how to stay in the room while the trigger zone is on right probably one of the most powerful things to do so i hope you have a beautiful day wherever you are sending you so much love from this very special place santorini and i hope this will really feed and nourish your manifestation game because everything is happening right here right now truly you like your energy your mastery of, you know, your own energy is what is creating your next dream. And it's not even about it being better when the dream has come through. It's simply for the, the sheer joy and pleasure of just walking toward the dream. You know, with this open energy, with this expansiveness in your being, with this receptivity. You can receive all the goodness that is meant for you.